In this video, we will see the basic details regarding activator, a myofunctional appliance. As we saw in the twin block appliance video, a myofunctional appliance uses the facial muscles and the extra oral muscles to facilitate arch movement and teeth movement. So activator is one such myofunctional appliance and it is commonly used. It is a removable passive and tooth borne appliance. So beginning with the history of activator, Kingsley initially introduced a vulcanite, vulcanite palatal plate which was later modified by Hortz into a Warbis plate. Pierre Robin suggested a block called as monoblock. These are all early forms of activator. Later, activator took its form when Vigo Anderson in 1908 modified the Hollis retainer for upper arch and the lower lingual horseshoe shaped flange. He tried this on his daughter and with, when the results were satisfactory, he along with Karl Hoppel made some modifications and that appliance was also known as Norwegian appliance. So these are the basic parts of an activator. It contains acrylic component and wire component. Moving on to the indications of activator. When we will use this myofunctional appliance? Usually any myofunctional appliance is usually advocated during the growth phase in growing individuals that is in children. In children, when we can detect skeletal changes that is class 2 division 1 and 2 class 3 in class 1, that to open bite and deep bite cases, lack of vertical development, that is the lower facial height is not developed. And in pre-treatment cases, that is before starting ortho treatment, fixed orthodontics, you could use activator for better results and also as a post-treatment retentive appliance. So what are the contraindications? As we saw, we will use it when there is lack of vertical development. In contraindications, we should remember that excess lower facial height or increased vertical mandibular growth, it is not used. And therefore, in non-growing individuals is also not, the limitations are more, the indications are less in non-growing individuals. In class 1, only in open bite and deep bite, we saw the indication for activator, it is not used in crowding. And the crowding may be due to disharmony in tooth and jaw size, those conditions cannot be corrected with the help of an activator. And when the lower incisors are severely proclined, and the, when the patient is facing some nasal breathing problem, the breathing difficulty is due to nasal stenosis or other nasal problems or allergic reactions, these appliances are avoided. Moving on to the advantages of activator, it is used in growing children, therefore it utilizes the existing growth potential of jaws. So it is an advantage in growing children and minimal oral hygiene problems are faced because it is a removable appliance and short appointments with long intervals therefore economical to the patient. Now moving on to the disadvantages, the first and major disadvantage is need of patient cooperation. When there is a lack of patient cooperation, this appliance may not be as much as effective as planned to be. So patient cooperation is must. Precise detailing and finishing of occlusion is absent in activator. It may need further fixed orthodontic treatment after the treatment with uh, activator is complete. And it may cause mandibular rotation. Moving on to the next major factor to remember while reading activator, the mode of action. So we just saw it is a myofunctional appliance. It uses the power of the extra oral muscles, facial muscles, muscles of mastication to facilitate arch movement and teeth movement. So exactly how does it use that potential? We call something as musculoskeletal adaption. So what is that? So mandible is trained to close in a new procedure. So the bite registration is made such that it is the mandible is either advanced or the bite is either opened. So in this new uh, posture from the old posture, the mandible is training to close. So this new pattern of mandibular clo closure will facilitate forward movement of mandible resulting in stretching of elevator muscles that is the masticatory muscles. Then we experience the muscles experience a myotactic reflex. 
this myotactic reflex generates kinetic energy this kinetic energy causes prevention of further forward growth of the maxillary dento alveolar process and at the same time the maxillary dento alveolar process is moved distally and as a result reciprocal forward force on mandible that is the maxilla is pushed backward and mandible is pulled forward this is the purpose of the kinetic energy created so some other suggestions are also given on the mode of action of activator some say the condylar adaptation that is the condylar adaptation is nothing but condyle is pulled forward so it tends to grow back backward and upward growth occurs force is generated while swallowing and sleeping so those forces will also help in the movement some other authors suggested another property known as the viscoelastic property it is the passive tension caused by stretching of muscles and the soft tissue so we saw about the mode of action of activator the possible modes by which the activator could act moving on to the fabrication first we should know about the construction bite how we will re register a construction bite in general it is an intermaxillary wax record as we also as we all uh, all know the to reposition the mandible forward and open the bite vertically so this is the purpose of the construction bite how much we will move it usually the mandible in general the mandible is advanced by 4 to 5 mm and open bite is 2 to 3 mm beyond the freeway space now is this constant in all cases no it is not like that so in what conditions how much we move usually uh, in class 2 division 1 cases that is with patience and horizontal growth pattern the activator is known as H activator in such cases vertical opening is minimum and sagittal advance is maxim maximum so you should remember while advancing the mandible forward the anterior advancement should be less than or equal to 3 mm posterior to the most protrusive position for example if the mandible could be pulled forward till this point for example i'm telling okay your advancement should be 3 mm beyond that you should not pull the mandible forward okay at least 3 mm should be the gap between the most protrusive position so that is a thumb rule to be followed another condition is class 2 division 1 with vertical growth pattern the activator is named as v activator horizontal growth pattern h activator vertical growth pattern v activator in the opposite of what we did there construction bite is high and slight modification while pulling the mandible forward slight mandibular forward positioning in deep bite and open bite cases we need not pull the mandible forward without mandibular forward positioning construction bite is alone taken in class 3 malocclusion, we all know the mandible is forward compared to the maxilla. So, we have to retrude the mandible. So, moving on to the fabrication of activator, I'll just tell you these steps in simple words. Impression we need to take and two models should be prepared with that. One as a study model and one as a working model. Bite registration is then took, um, made. That is what we saw in these uh, slides. What kind of construction bite should be done? for what condition then after which articulation of the models so the articulation is done in the reverse direction such that the teeth will face the face the hinges so that the palatal area will be easy to work for the appliance then we have to prepare the wire elements labial bow and the clasps moving on to the fabrication of the acrylic portion it is done in three segments maxillary segment mandible and intraocclusal if it is a wax pattern then heat curing as you all know waxing is done followed by de-waxing and packing cold cure is also used to fabricate activator so moving on to the trimming of activator it is actually a very huge portion to be dealt with here for five mark you just need to know the names and conditions so trimming of the activator the activator can be controlled in vertical direction sagittal direction and transverse direction so for vertical control that is for intrusion of molars and extrusion of molars there is a particular way like which you trim the activator uh, similarly for a sagittal control 
retrusion and protrusion and for transverse control arch expansion and arch contraction if time permits i'll make a separate video di di uh, discussing with you these uh, possibilities uh, moving on to the management of appliance the patient must be convinced of the benefits because patient cooperation is the most important factor here and the patient must be taught to use place and remove the appliance for first week 2 to 3 hours per day and that too in daytime patient is advised to use this appliance in the second week 3 hours in daytime plus during sleep it is advised so these timings should be registered in the patient's mind and they should follow it in a regular manner for better results moving on to the final part modifications there are numerous modifications as you could see to name a few bow activator of am schwartz wanderers modification reduced activator or cybernator propulsor pallet free activator karwetsky modification and herens modification for if if they ask activator as a five mark question it is enough if you name these modifications along with the trimming of the activator it is enough if you name those uh, uh, conditions under which trimming is done so if you have to write it as an essay you need to know these things in detail if time permits i'll make a separate video on those uh, factors so for five marks this video is more than enough happy learning see you soon in the next video